everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of Double T Insider. I'm your host, Taylor Peters. Well, as we know, college sports can carry athletes all over the world. And already this year, the softball team has spent time in Mexico for the Puerto Vallarta Challenge. It may have been new waters for most of the team who were visiting the country for the first time, but for one senior, it was simply returning to the place where it all started. My name is Dominique Alcocer. I'm from Mexico City. I play in the softball team in Texas Tech. Uh, I'm a pitcher and it was really fun to go to Mexico and play in Puerto Vallarta because um, that is my country and was really excited to see all people, uh, like Mexican people supporting me. I play in the national team of Mexico. We are trying to go to the Olympics games on 2020. So um, I'm really excited about that. In Mexico, we don't have, softball is not as big as in here. This, uh, playing a division one school was always my dream. So it's really nice to be able to play in here, in Peru, and also play in the national team representing my country. Uh, when I start pitching, the announcer, um, he's, he starts speaking in Spanish and announce to all people that only speak Spanish that I was from Mexico. So everyone start cheering um, and they start putting songs in Spanish, like traditional uh, songs. So I, I was really motivated and happy to see how all people was cheering for me. Normally my parents, uh, they cannot come to here because the flights are really expensive. So it's hard to them to came to come and watch me play. But my mom and my dad, they, they came to watch me play and they were really happy. And I, I was also really happy to see them. We, we went uh, zip lining and that was really, really, really excited. And I was scared at first because I, I never do that. And also we, um, we did a clinic for children um, and that was uh, also really awesome because it's, it's hard to them to know what is softball. So to show them what is softball and to teach them a little bit of what we know was, was really nice. I started playing softball because my dad, he played baseball. So I, I started playing softball because of that. But no, we never had that opportunity to see like a, a, another school or, or like a good players. When I started pitching, I was kind of nervous, but when I listened that everyone was cheering for me and I, I hear is that, that mariachi song is like a traditional song of Mexico. So I, I started like getting pumped and was really excited to, to see that. It was really cool to see um, coming out of the game to see the children's coming at me and asking me for autographers. That made me really happy to see them. I think this trip uh, binds us a lot as a team. I feel my teammates learn a lot about my culture. They were trying to speak Spanish, so they, they could understand what I'm going when I try to speak English. So it was really fun to, to see them speaking Spanish and I feel that bind us a lot as a team because we could share our culture. Still to come, from the exotic paradise of Trinidad and Tobago to the plains of West Texas, what brought this men's basketball player to Texas Tech? Double T Insider is brought to you in part by Plains Capital Bank, bank with confidence. The Red Raider Club, your support, their effort, our fearless champions. Texas Farm Bureau, Register today for your chance to deliver the game ball and receive a VIP experience at a Texas Tech home football game. Contest details available at TexasTech.com. Texas Ford dealers, visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. And UMC, it's our hospital. Coach Beard talks to me a lot about, you know, what do you want your, your story to be? You want your story to be that you came from the wreck and, and helped us win one year. Or it's time to take the next step. The fact that Matt Temple is a former walk-on to Texas Tech men's basketball might not even break the top 10 
the most interesting things about the senior forward. After all, when you were born in England and raised in Trinidad and Tobago, there's a lot more than college basketball to your story. I say I'm from Wichita Falls, but I'm, you know, my parents and my family get mad at me that I don't put Trinidad and Tobago on my, uh, on my, on my info and stuff. And it's like, I mean, no one's ever heard of Trinidad and Tobago. It's a small island in the Caribbean. And I really grew up there and, and I moved to the States and was kind of culture shocked in Wichita Falls for, for a couple of years before I ended up coming to Tech. Growing up in a third world country, organized basketball wasn't much of an option as an extracurricular activity but soccer was easily accessible and volleyball was Temple's first passion. I think it, I think it correlates a little with basketball, just having, kind of having like soft hands and, and reactions and stuff, but better, better volleyball player than basketball player, I might say. My best friends were from South Africa, Ecuador, the Netherlands, I mean all over, so uh, just became really, really tolerant of, of everything. Um, so I think it kind of taught me to be just accepting of, of a lot of things and a lot of people and just kind of have an open mind. Nice move, bounce pass, Temple dunks it! What a feed from Evans on a little pick and go. Temple hopes to carry that mindset into a career in athletics administration upon receiving his diploma so we can help student athletes from all walks of life. Kind of the athletic director I think would be, would be tops on my list. Um, I think collegiate athletics is, is really interesting to me and um, I think that's what I'm most passionate about actually. So, you know, if I could get a job within administration or, or coaching within collegiate athletics or college basketball, I think that'd be, that'd be my dream job. Matt may not be the star player for the Red Raiders, but he represents the diverse backgrounds you find in any athletic program. And before you dismiss him as a great athlete, he was teammates with Ohio State quarterback JT Barrett in high school Temple still feels he's the better Hooper. Oh yeah, go look at the look at the stat sheet from uh, from my senior year. I'm I'm 16 a game. He's 15, I think. So um, just compare the numbers, and and yeah, I'll take I'll take me over JT on the court. Well, Lady Redder basketball returns to the road for the final weekend of play at the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City. We're taking a behind-the-scenes look at game day on the road. to look inside Dan Law Field like never before. The sights and sounds of game day next. for the 2017 Red Raiders is underway. That stroke to right center field, headed for the gap. Davis hits first, he's headed for second. Just now picked up by the center fielder, still a stand-up double for Michael Davis. What a stroke. the pitch high in the air to left field back at the wall adios muchacho a three-run home run for orlando garcia he'll touch them all infield and regular depth
up from the pitch. Turned on to left field, hit deep. Pavalusin's back. Adios, Muchacho again. Eight to one goes quickly to 12 to one. Two, two. Got him. Swing and a miss, strike three. And the Red Raiders hammer New Mexico State 16 to one and move to four and one. Up next, Tech Volleyball takes a road trip to Red River and Double T Insider is tagging along. That's next after the break. Hi, my name is Katie Keenan. I am a sophomore middle blocker on the Texas Tech Volleyball team. And I'm Maggie Sagers. I'm a freshman and I'm a DS. We found out we were going on the trip. It was right when we got back from Christmas break and we weren't told where we were going. We were just told that uh, we would find out once we got there and that we were going to have two healthy workouts. Hard workouts. So we were all terrified. We were thinking, we don't know where we're going. We're, we have a weekend and all we're gonna do is just like die working out, and basically. Us, we're just gonna, we need to drink a lot of water. So then we had like these like goodie bags, like prize bags, and they told us like, you can open them. We were like, yes. And we open them. Full of stuff, like <laughs> Under Armour base pants, like thermal gear, gloves, mittens. like Hand warmers. Everything you could want, we're like, we're going in the snow. We're going to cold weather. And so we're asking all these questions, trying to figure it out. And they're like, we'll tell you once we get there. Like, you still have three more hours. I'm like, you're killing me. Like, so then finally they tell us, they're like, tomorrow we're going cross country skiing. And the next day we're going to go snowshoeing. Yeah, it was yeah. incredible. We got there. And it's like, probably, it was like nine at night. So it's freezing, like probably like 28 degrees. And we're all out there like, guys, that's ice. That's, that's snow, like we should take a picture. They're like, guys, just get inside, like move the food, water, all your stuff, like you'll see it tomorrow. But we were just so excited to be there. But then uh, snow skiing, we had like an amateur group and like a beginner's group. <laughs> we were both a part of the beginner's group. <laughs> I mean, we all fell a thousand times. Some more than others. But Caitlin Bryant fell a lot. Coaches. Morgan. Morgan Thomas, our all assistant coach, fell a lot. Chandler Atwood fell all the time. Missy. Missy Owens fell a lot. She's our new transfer from Long Beach State. She fell a lot. Every, literally everyone fell. Tony G, we have videos of Tony G falling. Like <laughs> Both nights we had little team activities where the coaches brought um, like little pictures and we had to like pick a few and say like these represent like whatever core values we felt we had. And then we had to like then move on to which core values we thought the team should have. And just through both of those activities, I thought like, I just know my teammates so much better like, yeah. on a personal level, just For like sure. friendship wise. And then like on the court, like how I can trust them, like what I know is going through their mind. And it's just, I think that's so valuable. Like when you're on the court, like you're going to battle. These are people you need to know have your back. <laughs> it was one of the best trips I've ever been on in my life. Like I haven't been like real skiing but it's definitely something like I had a blast doing like mm. we were we were on the same trail and the amount of GoPro <laughs> videos we have like Katie Katie watch out I'm coming she's like I'm on the ground I can't I can't move it's just, I'll never be able to replace those memories it's awesome. oh no and that's one thing that Tony G brought up is like right now yes we are focused on having a good season and wins and losses but like 10 years down the road like odds are I'm not gonna remember how we played against this team at this match but I'm going to remember every moment from that weekend. Absolutely. When I was born, I had a bone marrow uh, disease called osteomyelitis, and it affected my, my growth early on. I was very skinny. So when I was 10 years old, my mother went to a Montgomery ward and bought a bunch of little concrete weights with plastic covers by a company called DP. And that's when I started lifting weights in our, in our garage. And I was one of the only people my age doing that. And I just became a passion of mine and I, and I didn't really know that conditioning was a profession until I got it in my junior year in college. I really started getting exposed to, we had a new uh, strength coach come in and he stepped in and I'd always see him training in a very aggressive manner, but he wasn't our coach. He came in and started training me, and he literally changed my whole perception about myself and what I could accomplish. So I start, started thinking, well, what can I do to get in the college scene? And then the graduate assistant thing came across, 
I called every college you can imagine to, to get into a larger Division I, now as we call it a Power Five job. And one person called me back, and it was Rock Gullickson. He said, well, come on down, I'll talk to you. I drove down and wore a suit, walked into Texas weight room, and he offered me the job after a, a grueling two-hour interview. My first full-time job was William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. From there, I went to University of Louisville, and then I got a phone call from Sam Houston State uh, to interview for the head job there for the entire, all, all 12 varsity sports they had. And I was at Sam Houston State for roughly five years, and then the morning of 9-11 occurred, Tuesday, 9-11, and that was a very uh, impactful moment for me. When it happened, about an hour later, my grandmother called me, and I'm watching the news, and I'm at work, and, you know, TVs were all on everywhere, and she said, are you watching this? And I was like, yes, Joyce. And, and she said, well, this is like your Pearl Harbor. And when she said that, I immediately felt like I'd just been drafted. A year later, I walked into a recruiting office, and I saw a picture, a poster of a ranger in a swamp up to his chest with his face paint and his patrol hat and his M16. And I said, well, I want to do that. He said, well, we can probably make that work. Six years in the U.S. Army, transformative time for me. I got out, and my first job was at Rice University. And uh, worked at Rice a year and a half, and I got hired at Louisiana Lafayette for almost six years. And then in January of 16, I was offered a job here. The athletes that we coach for eight hours a week, or 10 hours a week, whatever it might be, have a lot more they can, they can put out. They don't know that yet. It's my job to make sure they understand how far they can push themselves. And if I'm not changing that athlete when he walks in the door, their psychological approach, their mental, their mental toughness, their physical abilities, if, if I'm not changing that, then I, I'm, not, I'm stealing my paycheck. I'm doing them a disservice. The athletes have to know why we're doing this. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing everything that we're doing? And it's not to create you know, a future military member. It's, it's, or it's not to, to create some mad persona. It's, it's to create a Big 12 champion. And my goal for these, these guys when they come in is I want them to graduate. I want them to be responsible, hardworking, determined people. And when that happens, alongside with the great coaching they get and the great resources that we provide, they're going to be successful here. We take a look at what's happening on campus this week in Texas Tech Athletics next on Double T Insider. Double T Insider was brought to you in part by Plains Capital Bank. Bank with confidence. The Red Raider Club. Your support. Their effort. Our fearless champions. Texas Farm Bureau. Register today for your chance to deliver the game ball and receive a VIP experience at a Texas Tech home football game. Contest details available at texastech.com. Texas Ford dealers, visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. And UMC, it's our hospital. Women's basketball heads to Oklahoma City to round out their season at the Big 12 tournament starting Friday. The Lady Raiders will face off against TCU Friday at 6 o'clock. Men's basketball hosts Texas for senior night tonight. The tip off for that game is at 8 o'clock. They finish their regular season on the road at Kansas State Saturday at noon. Baseball will host the Shriners Hospital for Children College Classic starting Friday. Texas Tech softball opens their home slate at the Texas Tech Invitational this weekend. Men's tennis is at Illinois Friday at 1 o'clock before taking on Northwestern Sunday at 11. And finally, the women's tennis team hosts TCU Saturday at noon and Rice on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And to get a second look at any of those times, just head on over to TexasTech.com and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for tuning in today for Double T Insider. I'm Taylor Peters. We'll see you next time.